I warmly welcome all of you to this training program on practical aspects of information system audit. Thanks for enrolling our course. I assure you that this is not a theory class. Except for this introduction, there will be no other PPTs, 100% practical training. We have designed the course in such a way that it simulates on-the-job kind of training. This course is primarily designed for the beginners, freshers in information system audit and hence we will start from the basic aspect of information system audit. Also, you can download ready-made templates from the resource section of this course. For each step, we will guide you about data requirements, audit procedure, evidence to be evaluated and how to write the audit report. We assure you that after completion of this training program, you will also be able to independently handle the IS audit as the cute little baby in the given picture. For an effective and efficient audit program, we have bifurcated information system audit process into 12 steps. For your easy understanding, we have designed exclusive video for each of these steps. Let us now have an overview of these 12 steps for conducting the information system audit. Step 1 Step 1 is about validating the availability of information security policy. In this step, as an auditor, you need to check availability of information security policy, whether policy is approved by appropriate authority, whether policy is updated at periodic interval and other aspect with respect to the policy. We will discuss in detail about how to audit and validate these controls in our step 1 video. Step 2 Step 2 is about auditing the controls related to the applications. As an auditor, you need to check whether application is appropriately categorized, whether each application is owned by a dedicated owner, how many factors of authentication are applied, whether user access review is conducted for each of these applications at periodic interval. We will discuss in detail about how to audit and validate this control in our step 2 video. Step 3 Step 3 is about auditing the controls related to database. So as an auditor, you need to validate whether database is appropriately categorized, whether each database is owned by a dedicated owner, whether operating systems are updated, organization should not be using end of life or end of support operating system, whether backup arrangement is appropriate. Now step 4. Step 4 is about auditing the controls related to data center. As an auditor, you need to check whether data centers are audited at periodic interval, whether service level agreement is available for externally hosted data center, whether secondary data center is hosted at an off-site location. We will discuss in detail how to audit and validate this control in our step 4 video. Now moving to step 5. Step 5 is about auditing the controls related to network devices 
So an, as an auditor, you need to check whether device is owned by a dedicated owner. Also, whether device configuration is reviewed at periodic interval. Moving to step six. Step six is about auditing the controls related to endpoint devices like computers, laptops, tablets, mobile, etc. So, so as an auditor, you need to check whether asset inventory is maintained and updated, whether endpoint device is owned by a dedicated owner, whether antivirus is installed for all such devices. Step 7. Email controls. Step 7 is about auditing the controls related to the email. As an auditor, you need to check whether a single policy framework is enabled. Don't worry about technical terms. We will simplify these terms while discussing the step 7. Whether DMARC is enabled. Whether attachments are scanned before downloading. So moving to step 8. Step 8 is about auditing the controls related to outsourcing. As an auditor, you need to check availability of service level agreement and inclusion of appropriate clauses in the SLA. Whether service provider is audited at periodic interval. Moving to step 9. Step 9 is about desktop controls. So as an auditor, you need to verify whether operating system is updated and licensed. Whether antivirus is installed and signatures are updated at regular interval. Various user restrictions are implemented and use of latest browsers. Moving to step 10. Step 10 is about auditing the controls related to BCP and incident manager. As an auditor, you need to check whether BCP and incident management policy is available also, whether these policies are appropriately tested and reports are presented to senior management. Moving to step 11. This is about the user awareness. So, you need to check whether users are trained at periodic interval on information security aspect. Also, whether background verification is conducted for new hires. Now step 12 is about other checkpoints. So if you see, these 11 steps will cover almost all the important and critical information security requirements. So as a step 12, you need to review all other checkpoints as required by the objective of the audit. So your audit objective can be compliance with PCI DGSS standard or compliance with ISO 27001 requirements or compliance with HIPAA regulations. So, if you are auditing a bank in India, you may require to comment upon the cyber security framework issued by the regulator that is RBI. If you are auditing an entity in US, you may require to comment upon the US cyber security regulation. If you are auditing a bank in Saudi Arabia, you may require to comment upon cyber security requirements of SAMA. So, step 1 to step 11 will most probably cover 70 to 80 percent of any standard or regulation. As a last step, that is step 12, you need to refer to particular standard or regulation for which audit is being conducted and cover the remaining aspect. I hope I am clear with step 12. In our next video, we will discuss in detail about step 1 that is auditing 
and validating information security policies.